Okay, so uh, yeah, my name is Diego Alonso Alvarez, and I am currently the RC team lead at uh, Imperial College. Uh, wait, don't wait, don't move. <laughs> uh, at Imperial College London. Uh, I was an RC when I applied and got this fellowship uh, two years ago, so things have changed a lot since then. But uh, since it has been a long year, a long time for everyone with the pandemic, uh, well, I have had time to, to go through the fellowship, to the objectives of the fellowship, and I wanted to give you some updates and lessons learned and material that I have created. So uh, the idea, the original idea behind this fellowship was to was building on top of a workshop I delivered in the uh, RSC conference in 2019. It was just three hours. Uh, and it was pretty popular and got good feedback about uh, graphical user interfaces for research software, the things, pros and cons, and things that you should take into account. Uh, so building on top of this, uh, I, my fellowship plans were to deliver a much bigger uh, scale workshop, uh, two days long, in different places in the UK, uh, with a smaller group, and, and so we could work together into different designs and with a whiteboard and things like that. And then pandemic happens. So the plan move forward, but in an online version. Uh, so originally it was uh, three workshops, uh, Glasgow, Nottingham and London. In the end, it was uh, uh, three online workshops, uh, two half days and one full day, which was a hack day, so much lightweight uh, than, than the other two half days, which were uh, lecture-like, if you want, even though there were some examples and tutorials there. There were some pros and cons uh, of uh, being it online, the cons, and I think that the, 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 that's why I delay so much uh, uh, doing the workshops in case the pandemic uh, went away, was that you were missing the social part and the community building part of the workshop. Um, it, and it is not, I think I never felt it was so much fun to work in groups remotely. You can be productive, but it is less fun. And, but on the, on the bright side, I think that more people, way more people gain access to the workshops, uh, including people from Australia and Brazil. In one of the editions, we have people uh, spanning 11 time zones, which was weird uh, and strange to manage. Uh, and given that we didn't have a nice whiteboard in the room to play around and to draw things, that encouraged in some ways using uh, the proper wireframing tools, uh, which is a basic technology that you should use whenever you work on a, on a good design. Once you have gone through the pen and paper stage and you want to do something more uh, practical. This is a little summary of the, of the courses at the, of the, these three workshops. So it was two half days and a half day. Uh, they were in April, June, and October in 2021. Uh, I had a decreasing number of people <laughs> being registered. Uh, the attendance was also slightly a little bit lower than I was expecting, but I think that uh, there, were, there are very good reasons for that. Uh, first, uh, well, there's always a mismatch between people registered and attended in free events, especially. Uh, I think that by this time, People was already a bit tired of, of Zoom meetings. I definitely was. I haven't attended a, a Zoom event or conference uh, since late 2000 <laughs> or early 2021. Uh, so it's not really surprising. And in particular for the last event, I think that there was, was also an impact on being already in the academic, within the academic course. But I don't think it won't, uh, it, it was bad news to have uh, uh, these, these numbers. I think it was good uh, that there was an interest, there was a, the people that was in the, indeed in the course was uh, very engaged and everything that was created during this, uh, these workshops were, are, are open and accessible to everyone. So as I was, as I wanted to, for it to be, uh, I hope that it will have impact beyond the, these particular workshops. So a few things uh, that uh, have been out, outputs of these workshops. The first edition, uh, of course, for the first edition, uh, I had to put together all the course material, the slides that are available in Zenodo and the recordings in YouTube. The link is there and it's also in the in the hack uh, in the uh, um, document already. So you can access both uh, things uh, easily from there. Uh, and the recordings also have uh, captions, uh, which is useful, even though my automatic captions are not that great for obvious reasons. 
and uh, I also write a blog post, two blog posts uh, in the SSI and Soil Sustainability Institute that mostly cover uh, the first lesson of, of the course, why GUIs are useful and interesting for research software. Again, the link of the blog post are, are there. For the second, for, the, for this one, uh, the one of the of lessons were, were, were delivered not by me, but by Mark Turner, who I, as you probably you all know, he's the chair of the this year RSC conference in Newcastle and leads the RSC team in Newcastle. And he is uh, amazing uh, in user interface and user experience. So that's uh, if you don't watch any of the other uh, lessons or read any of the of the slides, please have a look at this one at the Mark, Mark Turner's uh, presentation because it's really, really good. The second edition also bring uh, some, some news. I refined the lessons after feedback from the first session. I introduced exercises related to frame to white framing, which were really useful and engaging and people really love them. Uh, and to, the exercises were about creating a GUI for, for Git, uh, which was <laughs> interesting and useful, the different approaches. And the projects, uh, when people started to, to in the hack day to create their projects were also very interesting and, and very uh, diverse. This one in particular is the wireframe, which you won't see much unless you zoom in a lot, uh, about one of the projects that was uh, from someone working at the British Library who wanted to create a tool that enabled to align the coordinates of maps, in this case, the, from India, of historic maps in an easy way. And I enhance a uh, part of the material of that I had used before in the in the in the uh, IRC conference in 2019 and in, in, improve it with new details and better layout and correct typos and things like that. This link is also in the hack and the document. And in the final edition, uh, apart from refining the lessons further, uh, I develop a, a reusable tool that I could use to 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 simplify the creation of GUIs from scratch. So I use this, this, this tool in the, in the workshop. And it was, I think, helpful for me and for the attendees. But since it was a very early stage, there were some things. I, I was solving bugs uh, along the way. Uh, but I think it, it was useful. And the most important thing, I think, for me at least, is that this tool is something that we now use at the, at, in our team to create GUIs. Um, uh, for researchers at Imperial. So it's something that we are using in production and therefore refining it and improving it as we use it. So what I got from the fellowship were well, lots of things, uh, visibility, obviously, that, uh, that comes with the role, but also uh, by trying to teach people about GUIs and, and, and user interfaces and user experience, I gain a lot of, uh, lot of knowledge on how to do it right and tools that are there to help you. I well created this reusable tool that, as I said, we are using in production and improving it uh, along the way. So I think that maybe not now, but you know, in time, it will be useful, something really useful for the community. And it led me to a particular reflection, which is who should learn how to create GUIs. Uh, now that I have become uh, the, the team leader of the IC team at Imperial, it made me wonder if researchers actually should bother about uh, GUIs at all. GUIs are important for research software, but should they learn how to do it? it? It is going pretty much outside of the comfort zone and also the things that they should be doing as researchers. So I'm not sure whether the audience of this type of workshops should be actually researchers or more specialized uh, people, RSCs or RSC-minded uh, people, whatever their role name, uh, your title is, uh, more than researchers, PhDs, postdocs, that should be, in principle, more focused on getting scientific results rather than working on the accessibility and, and usability. But this is something that it will be great to discuss. So that's all from my side.